Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today, AMD's APU puts NVIDIA to shame. Intel announces a 24-core monster. Arc GPUs officially come win. 4 million Arc GPUs and NVIDIA's making gaming CPUs. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD's new Ryzen 6000 CPUs embargo was recently lifted, which brought with it reviews of new laptops. And while their new mobile chips are fairly impressive, there's one thing the embargo showed us that's much more interesting. According to the slides released by AMD, their new iGPU is really impressive, and reviews did show this a bit. In the 6900HS, AMD's iGPU got nearly double the performance when compared to Intel's 12 12900HK in Forza Horizon 5, but the crushing doesn't stop there. According to AMD, there's 680M in the 28W 6800U, which is an ultra low power part, actually beats Nvidia's MX450. And even better than that, with FSR enabled, it can beat Nvidia's 1650 Max Q. Of course, Nvidia does have similar upscaling tech that may work on the 1650, but this is seriously impressive. Remember that the iGPU is is part of the 28 watt part, though rated wattage on mobile parts don't really mean much anymore, but hopefully the U variants at least stick close to theirs. Either way, AMD's new RDNA 2 based iGPUs have finally done what I suggested they might before AMD announced them at CES, and that's bring playable FPS and modern games at 1080p. Now we just need desktop APUs and dreams will come true. But first, a huge shout out to this video sponsor, Brilliant! the best way to learn computer science, or really anything in the STEM field, as Brilliant was made specifically to teach math, science, and computer science. Want to learn more about the hardware we talk about every day? Brilliant has you covered. From software development to data science, engineering, they've got it all. And the best part is that all of their courses are created by award-winning teachers. I'm talking MIT, Microsoft, Google, and more. But what makes Brilliant so good is that they teach you by showing you. Plus, they're constantly updating courses courses to make them even more fun and interactive. The best part is that you can try it for free today by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt or click the link in the description. And the first 200 users who click that link get 20% off the annual premium. You can't beat that. Next up for today, Intel just had their new investor meeting, and in it, as well as before it, they shared a ton of official information, so much so that I had to separate it into two stories. First up, they actually showed off their next-gen Raptor Lake CPUs. Remember that these are Intel's upcoming 13th gen desktop parts. And as you can see, the chip they tested is a 24-core, 32-thread CPU, which means the leaks are spot on yet again. The upcoming CPUs are also apparently socket compatible with current gen Alder Lake. On top of that, they confirmed their next next-gen CPUs Meteor Lake are set for release in 2023. Then there's Aero Lake for 2024, and finally, Finally, the company confirmed Lunar Lake CPUs. Basically, Intel is finally back in the game, and they really proved it with the announcement of their next-gen Sapphire Rapid Xeon CPUs with on-packaged HBM memory. According to Intel, it gives the CPU up to four times the memory bandwidth. What's wild about this is that they actually showed off a benchmark of the CPU compared to AMD's Milan and OpenFoam, and the CPU beat AMD's by over 2.8 times. Intel even claims a huge jump over AMD's upcoming Milan X, which is the company's refresh with 3D stack L3 cache. Of course, this would only benefit Intel in more memory-bound workloads, but that's a massive performance jump. With that said, third-party benchmarks are definitely required, but if this ends up being the case, it's truly impressive. Intel's Sapphire Rapids with HBM is set for production in Q2. And this brings me to the second half of the Intel news, this time with a focus on GPUs. And here, Intel actually confirmed what I've been talking about for a little while now. According to them, while notebook GPUs are coming in Q1, desktop Arc GPUs aren't set to come until Q2. On top of that, they also confirmed to be making workstation cards set for release in Q3. And if you've been following the channel, you know that we suspected that given the recent leak that gives support for five monitors. But the news doesn't stop there. 
Intel also said that AXG, which is their accelerated computing systems and graphics group, expects to ship more than 4 million GPUs in 2022 alone, meaning Intel's jump into discrete GPUs couldn't come at a better time. Of course, we were hoping this would happen given the recent comments from Raja Kaduri, but that's even more than I thought, and it could seriously help turn the shortage around and bring prices way down. Fingers crossed. And lastly for today, we know NVIDIA recently announced an end to their acquisition of ARM, thanks to quote, significant regulatory challenges. But like I said then, it was odd that NVIDIA announced an expansion of their Israel team just before the cancellation. Well, at the company's earnings call, NVIDIA made it clear that they still have huge plans for CPUs. According to Tom's Hardware, their 20-year license with ARM will let them make highly customized products, and NVIDIA wants a top-to-bottom family of ARM CPUs. Specifically, Tom's Hardware states that NVIDIA wants to bring CPUs to all of their main businesses. That is, professional graphics, AI, data center, automotive, and get this, gaming. Meaning if this report is right, to which this is coming from NVIDIA's earnings call, so I don't see how it couldn't be, but NVIDIA is actually planning gaming CPUs. Of course, something like that would likely be far off, but Microsoft has shown that they're willing to work with ARM CPUs, so it really could happen. Time will tell just how well NVIDIA can compete. So while that does it for today, are you excited to possibly get a mainstream NVIDIA CPU? And what about those 4 million Intel GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below.